This module focuses on the criteria for component selection for PV installations. The inverter can be considered as the heart of a solar facility. For a utility scale installation, the inverter cost is usually around 5% of the cost of the complete installation. The levels of performance to be expected from an inverter are between 95 and 98.5%, and there are three types of inverter the multi-power stage, the one power stage, and the multi-controlled power stage. The electricity company that your solar plant supplies will be concerned about the potential effect of your solar plant on its network. They may ask for galvanic isolation transformers where the connection is low voltage. The main issues to take account of when considering the inverter are the maximum input voltage, that's the voltage of the PV generator, which must always be below the inverter's maximum input voltage. And you must also consider the maximum power point voltage. The MPPT voltage is the range in which the inverter is able to get the maximum power from the PV generator's IV profile. The IV profile is a graph of the current versus the voltage from a PV generator as the load increases from no load to maximum load uh, voltage. The PV generator's voltage must be within the MPPT voltage range in all conditions and weathers across the whole year. Other important parameters include the inverter efficiency. Inverter efficiency will vary depending on the load. Usually the manufacturers give a maximum efficiency and the European efficiency, which is a weighting of the different efficiencies where the load is 5%, 10%, 30%, up to 100%. And you also need to consider the inverter's temperature range. It's extremely important, as in some places the temperature can rise to over 40 degrees so that your PV installation requires some kind of cooling technology to work efficiently. In that situation, the cost of the installation and maintenance of the cooling system need to be included in your calculations. The advantages and disadvantages of monocrystalline, polycrystalline and thin film solar panels will need to be considered, of course. Thin film panels are cheaper, but they convert a smaller percentage of light to energy, so they need larger surfaces and structures. And the guaranteed output power of thin film modules is, is not as precise as in mono or polycrystalline modules. And while thin film has been the dominant technology in a few markets in latter years, particularly India, there are few references from facilities producing power in large quantities. Here's a table ranking panel types by their light to energy conversion efficiency. It's based on 2010 prices and needs to be checked against the prices on offer from today's suppliers before decisions are taken. Monocrystalline can be broken down into the standard and high efficiency products if you want to take this a step further with the higher efficiency modules requiring a larger upfront investment. And thin film with its lower efficiency requires costs 10% or so below monocrystalline to compete. Temperature becomes relevant in locations where temperatures are above 25 degrees centigrade. With PV modules, panel efficiency is the most important electrical specification to be checked. The higher the efficiency, the smaller the surface area needed to generate a certain power output. Voltage and current parameters are not determined because the panels can be connected in series or in parallel to match the inverter. Losses due to temperature affect production, particularly in countries near the equator with latitudes between 0 and 35 degrees. Where the panels are a matching technology, the thermal coefficient is quite similar between different manufacturers and models. Where the panels use different technologies, there can be big differences in the thermal coefficient and in performance, as you can see from this slide. A number of light concentrating technologies have been developed to improve the efficiency of PV cells. These include Fresnel lenses and refractive optical systems. They can offer light concentrations of 500 magnitude with newer technologies aiming for around 1000 magnitude. This kind of light concentration can deliver improvements in cell efficiency. 
cell efficiencies of 45% are being achieved today in laboratory conditions. At module level, concentrated PV efficiency is around 30%. However, to be effective, the systems rely on sun tracking to an accuracy of less than 0.2 degrees and they, can, they remain expensive. Concentrated light comes with concentrated temperatures, so cooling systems are required and the optical elements can suffer from quite rapid degradation. In looking at electrical protection, on the DC side, the system will need protection with DC fuses and DC miniature circuit breakers, while on the AC side, AC differentials and AC miniature mini circuit breakers are needed. Typical specifications are set out on this slide. To protect the insulation against overvoltage, high energy varistors must be installed close to the element to be protected. The main aim of the varistors is to detect any overvoltage quickly and then divert it to the earth. The varistor may be destroyed in the process depending on the level of power to be diverted. PV facilities have an expected life of over 25 years and the cabling quality should match that. Between the solar panel and the inverter, the cables will need to be weatherproof in outdoor conditions and suitable for indoor conditions where they're used in buildings. Between inverters and meters, it's recommended that the cables are buried or run through cable ducts. In medium voltage situations, there may be a case for aerial installation or alternatively, again, run through cable ducts. There are cables specifically designed for PV applications and not always used by the leading developers, however. The cable's conductor should be electrolytic copper, the insulation should be halogen free and the cover should be fireproof with low emissions in case of fire to avoid health or device damage. Here's a comparison table of the characteristics of a range of cables suitable for PV applications that can be found on the market. And here is a table with the characteristics of RZ cabling. Earthing pegs connected by uncovered copper cable should be sufficient for lower power insulations when it comes to earthing. High power installations usually use an uncovered copper cable grid, though earthing pegs can also be used in certain situations. A typical earthing system for your PV facility, facility will require 35 millimeter uncovered copper cable together with earthing pegs of different sizes, depending on the required depth, normally between one and a half and two and a half meters. A transformer for a medium voltage installation will need to match the output power of the PV inverter. It will require a mineral oil bath and an accessible neutral natural cooling and three phase voltage reduction from medium voltage to low voltage. There are different types of medium voltage cells. Measurement cells and automatic switch cells can be controlled remotely. Needs may differ according to the connection requirement and as a result costs may vary dramatically. Meters must meet the certification requirements of the countries where they are used. Typical specifications to meet are that they are class 1, that's class B standard, and that they are bidirectional with optical and RS-485 outputs. Depending on the installed power, the meter can be directly connected or coil inductors can be used. The most common scenarios are a grid connected PV facility that exports all of its generated electricity to the grid except for that consumed by its inverters, monitoring and communications devices, auxiliary services and sun tracking devices. Or a net metering setup where a grid connected PV facility uses the grid as its battery. For grid connection, in order to avoid shadowing, medium voltage cables should be buried underground rather than carried above the modules. 15 kV to 30 kV cabling is commonly used, although that can vary in different countries. An underground to aerial link can be made to connect the plant to the electricity company's power lines. 
and the medium volt cable requires reinforcement to guarantee that the electrical distribution is homogeneous. The reinforcement is in three layers, conductor reinforcement, insulation and insulation reinforcement. The cable also requires an external cover to provide resistance against humidity, fire, ultraviolet sunlight, impacts and chemical agents.